Welcome back everybody. I have finally achieved my goal of having the ultimate retro gaming setup here in my new fantastic wood grain heaven. But how did I get here and what did it take to achieve this milestone you may ask? Well just sit back and relax and let me show you how all this was made possible. All right, yes, so today's the big day. I need to move my Neo Geo MBS inside. So I've got it completely cleaned out. The monitor is not in there and some of the back boards are taken out. The only thing that we do have down in there still is our power supply. And then our isolation transformer down here. There's the back of the coin box. And up here is where our harness is and all our other wiring connection points. So the idea is I'm gonna put this on a dolly and then move it and instead of taking it in through the house here I'm actually going to have to move it around my Jeep through the backyard where that tree is and the garbage can around this side of the house and then go in through a back door because that's where the basement entrance is. I've moved my cars out of the way a little bit now we can show you the path I'll have to take around here with the MVS machine and I know that I'm not going to have the opportunity to show you this while I'm pulling this up this hill because this is not even terrain right here. It's a little bit sloped, but it does get even up here. And I've got some other projects going on. But we're going to come around back to the back porch area. So ignore a lot of this woodworking we've got, but it's going to come right through here and into this door. And I think somebody might be on the other side waiting for us. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Brutus. So this is how we get in. And through there. And straight down here is where the machine's going to go. So not a whole lot of room. No room on the sides. Very old rickety stairs, but they're sturdy. I'm concerned about the clearance right here, but I've measured everything and it should just slide down right on its backside, right Brutus? Kind of just get on some blankets and slide down these stairs and make it down here, right? Here we come down here and show everybody where it's going down these stairs and down into the wood grain paradise. Right, Brutus? You ready? You ready for it to get down here? Yeah, let's get it down here. Somehow, Big Red has survived the trip down this tiny corridor. It's settled in over here in the corner. And I don't know how my father and I did this without really messing it up. Looks pretty good. So the next thing I've got to do is get the monitor in there and configure that. Let's go over here. Say a quick hello to Brutus. Brutus, are you excited to finally get the Neo Geo machine back in? Oh yeah, you really care. You're just sitting there snuggling with your Titans blanket. Since the Titans, I don't know what they do, just whoop the crap out of the Rams recently. So that'll give you a time frame of when we're working on this. Here's the monitor. And this is some stuff on the model. How about that. The tube. Of course, this bad boy is a zenith tube. Very common uh, to have a zenith tube in these. Flyback looks pretty good, so does the rest of the board. It should be fine. There's a couple things on the back of the monitor you might want to just be aware of. First off, this breakout board gives you all kinds of controls for screen, including some geometry controls and then contrast and black levels. And then it's connected right here to another connection inside the arcade machine. It's connected right there uh, for power. And uh, there's a connection point right here where the RGB and sync and ground pins connect into the monitor and give the picture to it. And the only other thing really to adjust anything are your gains and biases here for each color. So you got red, green, and blue right there on the neck board. We just need to get it up picked up and installed back over there in its home. Okay, well, I don't know if I'm really ready to do this, but we gotta move that into there and then reconnect it. 
Now obviously I've moved the control panel out of the way. It's got it open. And this is on a nice frame, so hopefully I can just slide it back in here. It's a pretty big tube. I'm not catch anything. And it will slide back a little bit and catch in its place. Be sure, careful not to smash your hand. There we go. Oh yeah, got it lined up here to screw back in. That's where screws go that'll hold this in place. Three on the top and then three on the bottom. I'll get those screws put in and then we can turn around and get in the back and connect this, which is the cable I was telling you about that goes in that controls our red, green, blue sink and ground into the monitor for video input. And this just connects to that other connection point for our power. Now the monitor's back in to place here. And I'm just gonna move the cables around, make sure that nothing has become loosened or disconnected in the moving process. Everything looks good. Neck board's good, everything over there. Here's this RGB connection going just right over on the side here of this point like that. And that's our video right there in. And the only other thing is on the exact opposite side over here, we've got our hot or power. You can connect that back. All right, let's look from this side in. And normally, as I said, our boards would be down here. This one had a four slot MVS cartridge uh, player in it, and it would hook up to the JAMA looking connector down here. It is not actually pinned out for JAMA. There is one bit of difference on the audio side. So the problem with this one is though that the boards were just having all kinds of issues, mostly RAM issues, maybe trace issues, so it needs to be repaired. These right here connect actually into the memory card units and then there's a couple of other extra things wired into like these uh, counters, both of them are wired in. And then we've got our marquee that's also wired in over on this side. Let me show you what we're going to be using in here instead of the boards that normally come with this. All right, well, here is one of the big reveals. I have been working very hard to get this configured and all ready. And this video today is mostly about getting the arcade machine ready. And it will not be a deep dive into this Mr. Device called the Mr. Cade from Mr. Add-ons. But this beautiful piece of hardware uses the same technology that the Mr. does. And um, it just beefs it up a little bit more and it gives you the ability to have a JAMA connector here. Now thanks to my friend Scarlet Sprites and his video which I'll link to below. I was able to find this big red JAMA connector from JAMA Nation and what this does is a normal JAMA connector does not support stereo audio uh, well at least not the way it's set up on this board the way that the uh, MVS is so the MVS is going to have a slightly different pinout mostly to do with the audio so we should have our MVS connector go here from the machine this will connect here to our Mr. Cade, and then I do have a connection point here to connect, I think, the speakers. There's a four pin right there, so that's what I believe goes in there. And now you can see the Mr. Cade. Very small compared to an original piece of hardware. But there's that, a JAMA adapter with the audio pins connected. And then going into the JAMA board connector on the Mr. Cade. If I will connect a HDMI cable down in here because it will run both HDMI out as well as the analog video out down there that HDMI port next to the power here's just another angle on what it looks like back here and again I'll have a lot more coming on this machine and this Mr. K device specifically but let's get it 
set up and do a power on and see what happens. I've set everything up to run the final test. If you'll notice over here I've got a HDMI cable out there. And I have added a USB device right here. It's just a keyboard to help us access the mister. And again, just the JAMA board connected. And what we're going to do is just power on our surge protector down here and let's just see what happens. I promise I've not tried this yet. Let's just see. Oh, you heard it, I think. I think I'm hearing the de sounds of a wonderful device here getting started. Let's go around. And yes, okay. We have the mister set up over here on the screen. So there we go. We've got it on the HDMI and over here. Ooh, it's loud. Okay. So yeah, that controls the volume manually. All right, so we've got metal slug on the arcade and metal slug on the flat screen as well as audio and that has audio as well as picture and this is a snuggly happy Brutus. All right, well that's how we got here and that's how I got this all set up down here in my basement. Now I will tell you that this is all again being made possible by that Mr. Cade. And anybody who's already had experience with the Mr. will know that it is one of the best devices ever made for retro gaming. And I will be very excited to bring you more content coming up in the future featuring the Mr. Cade because there's a lot of features in this thing and I'm really just getting warmed up into how to work it and maneuver around with it and especially the software that is involved with that so there's a lot more that I want to bring you on that little amazing device but how awesome is it to have uh, the Neo Geo MVS down here and have it running any kind of arcade cores not just Neo Geo but all kinds of arcades as well as retro gaming consoles through that mister and then currently I have it set up to output to an Xtron which then goes into a PVM and that can really do RGBS to any PVM with that setup right there, but you don't even really probably need that extra on device. But again, look for more of this stuff coming up in the future. And then ultimately you have HDMI out for either passing through to a flat screen television or ultimately HDMI capture, which I think is amazing to have that ability out of an arcade machine. But that's really how I got here. And now Brutus and I can have a lot of fun in the basement and hopefully get some work done. I don't know, it's going to be pretty tough for the, for the next couple weeks to get anything really productive done. But I think I'll try to manage to do my best and I will see you guys next time with some more retro content. Well, Brutus, what did you think of our move? Yeah, not much. Well, ah, no, you sleepy. Yeah, it was pretty tight fit, wasn't it? I mean, shoot. Only really had five and a half inches of clearance up from the roof.